So hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be going through a few situational judgement questions and we'll talk through how I work through these questions and hopefully that'll help you revise better. So if we we're on the situational judgement questions now and yes let's go. Continue to update the night shift and colleagues send a message. For late. Let's hand over from the doing. Right, so if someone's late, they've told you they're going to be late, um, you're really tired and you want to get home, but the key thing is here, patient safety and your responsibility as a doctor. Even though you're tired, you want to make sure you hand over the patients correctly. Um, you need to get home at the end of the shift, so as you have no obligation to stay late and you are exhausted. No, very inappropriate. Wait the extra half an hour to give a proper handover, very appropriate. Leave a note summarising everything important for your colleague and leave when your shift ends. Again, very inappropriate. Again, it's because although you're tired, these patients are at great risk uh, if the doctor's not there and the handover is a very important part of things. So even if your colleague is late, it's really important that you can, um, you know, give a proper handover. So leaving a note is very irresponsible. Inform the head of nurse of the important things for when your colleague arrives late. Inappropriate but not awful. You know, the head nurse knows quite a bit as well. So at least you're telling someone Call your colleague and give the hand over the phone. Um, again, let's say it's very inappropriate because um, you want to make sure the hand over is again in person properly done so that no things are overlooked. Because again, if the hand over is not done properly, it could put patients at risk and that's not what you want. Right, so that's not is very inappropriate to the nurse. Okay, as you're passing on extra responsibility to the nurse, great. Mm, okay, inappropriate, not awful. Okay, you give the opportunity for the questions to be answered. Fair enough. Okay, that's fine. Let's return to overview. So, Callum is a first year medical student and revising for his exams. His exams are clear, so Callum starts to procrastinate for all the schedule. He's struggling to cope, but glow he has, and knows that if he continues to procrastinate. Okay, great. So, Continue to procrastinate and hope for the best, very inappropriate. Speak to some of his friends about his problems, very appropriate. Talk to a professional at the university to get help, very appropriate. Look up revision strategies online, but don't tell anyone that he's struggling. That's very inappropriate. If you are struggling, it's important you tell someone. Um, otherwise it begins to get quite difficult and drop out of university again, very inappropriate thing to do. Because these situations can be managed quite well and so dropping out is like, um, instead of solving the situation, you're running away from it. And that's not again what you should be doing. Okay, incorrect. Um, okay, this is a perfect not ideal, although this may go some other way to help kind of cope. If you don't want to talk to anyone, okay, right. Fair enough, okay. So what it's saying is that this first part where you look up revision strategies is appropriate, but not telling anyone is inappropriate or not ideal. Right. Let's go back. Um, next section. Oh gosh, long question. So, Tashka and Dan, two second year medical students who are on placement at the hospital. Here's the thing to Alan, a patient who suffered a stroke two weeks ago. Okay, let's go to Tashka. Tashka and Dan. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay, so this guy's had a stroke, Alan's had a stroke. Tashfa and uh, Dan are medical students. Lily, Alan can't really do things himself, but he wants to be independent and wants to do things himself. But Dan is trying to be a bit too helpful um, because he really empathizes with uh, Alan's difficulties. Uh, but Alan doesn't like this. So, but yeah, um, ask Alan if you would prefer Dan to not pass on the glass. That's very inappropriate. If it is agitating the patient, then it's important you ask the patient and see if it's you know what they want or what they don't want. Tell Dan to leave the glass for Alan to reach for. Um, again, this is a situation where they're sitting together with the patient, so you don't want to say that now. It's very inappropriate because it could, uh, well, quite inappropriate because it could, um, you know, telling your colleague not to do something in front of the patient could um, could cause a bit of distrust. Move the table close to Alan. Yes, that's very good. 
told Dan that he should allow patients to be independent once the consultation is over. Yeah, that's quite good. Apologise for Dan's unintentional behaviour. No, that's going to do that. Yikes, okay, a lot of um, partial and incorrect questions. That's correct. Tell Dan to leave the glass for Adam to reach for. Okay, so this is saying something else could be irritating. I don't know, I didn't think of that. Fair enough. Move the thing, move the table closer. Okay, so this is saying if you move the table closer, that's going to make Alan even more angry because he's trying to reach for the glass to strengthen it. So if you move it closer, you're making it easier for him. Quite confusing. Okay, the reasoning here isn't the best, but that's what it's saying. Um, should be independent. Okay, right. So it's saying no point mentioning this because it's a very specific scenario with a specific patient. And so it could be... Um, it's not really necessary to say it in this situation, which is again fine. Apologise for Dan's un unintentional behaviour. Yeah, okay. So apologising is good because Alan feels agitated, but then it could undermine Dan. I think these questions in general were just kind of confusing. Um, fair enough. As we say always, you don't get every question right, and that's not the point of these videos. The point of these videos is for us to work together and see what we're getting right, what we're not getting right, and if we don't get it right, why aren't we getting it correct? That's the point. Okay, to medicine. Please come bring the name of your patient. Okay, so the registrar is saying you won't care about his parents and let's go drunk. So Jessica's not too um, confident. So a registrar has a patient, patient's quite drunk, doesn't really care about the quality of the treatment, so the doctor says, right, you can try out as a trial patient, but the Jessica isn't feeling comfortable to do this, so she's not, uh, you know, wanting to do it, but she doesn't want to seem like she's a coward, so. Suture the patient's lacerations as best as she can. So, if she's unsure about her capability, she shouldn't do it at all, so that'd, that'd be very inappropriate. Tell the registrar that she will suture his las laceration, then get another doctor to do it. What does that mean? I don't get it. Okay, let's do that. Refuses to suture the patient as she's not. I think that's very no very appropriate. Report the registrar for putting her in an uncomfortable position. That's inappropriate but not awful. Express her concerns. Okay, that's very appropriate. Let's see. Because I guess if you know your limitations and someone tells you to do something independently, that's really not good. If it's under the supervision of the doctor, then it's much better. Okay, the partially correct questions. So tell the registrar that she will suture his lacerations. It's only appropriate. Okay, because she should not lie. Great. Okay. Refuse to suture the patient as she's not certain of her abilities. That's appropriate but not ideal. Okay. Okay, she wants herself help, right? All right, okay. Reporting is quite a high level sort of thing, so it's saying try and sort it out in other ways before you report. Great. Phoebe's a second medical student on the way home. On the way home, Joe begins. So, just one patient. Okay. So, one of the friends is discussing patients on the train. It's rush hour. Train's busy. So, um, the medical students. So, of course, she feels uncomfortable talking about patients in a public domain. So you want to sort of not talk about it there. That's not the right situation. So to confront Joe in the train, a very inappropriate thing to do. Talk to Joe's supervisor. Again, it depends on what he's said. If he's kept the colleagues inappropriate, like, uh, not inappropriate, um, if he's kept the colleagues anonymous, then it's fine. So talking to Joe's supervisor, I'd say, is very inappropriate. It's a very superficial incident. Quietly mentioned on the train then talk to him properly in, yeah. Join in about the guys, I'd say. Very inappropriate. Pretend Joe didn't say anything. Inappropriate but awful. She needs to remind Joe that she, he shouldn't do that in a public domain. 
Um, confront Joe in the train. Okay, it says that's appropriate, why? So not help the fact that Joe has discussed the patient, but would further exacerbate the problem and would embarrass Joe. Okay. However, it would make sure he stops. Okay, so what it's saying is it's appropriate because it will make him stop, but then again, at the risk of embarrassing him in, you know, in front of others on the train. Fair enough. The last one, pretend Joe didn't say anything. Actually, that's a very good point. You should have selected very inappropriate because when you make a mistake, the last thing you should do is brush it over and move off. So, yeah. Emma is a 15 year old patient who has come into her local GP. See, Emma explains that she's currently having problems with the menstrual cycle and would like to prescribe a constitutive pill to resolve the problems. She also explains that she does not wish for her parents to be informed of this. But Emma's only 15. Mm -mm 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 -mm. The legal age for you know, consensual sex is 16. She's 15, but she's saying she's got problems with her menstrual cycle. Um, uh, she's asking for a contraceptive pill. Of course, a contraceptive pill does help with a menstrual cycle. But then again, she could be saying menstrual cycle as an excuse to get the contraceptive pill. So, um, that Emma is only 15, that is important. Actually, I'd say that's very important because contraception and underage, it's like a quite an important issue. Um, actually, less but important, Dan, less but important. Emma has said she can't as a boyfriend. That's very important. Um, but Emma does not want her parents to know about this prescription. Again, that's quite important, hiding this from her parents. She's technically a kid still. But Emma has not described symptoms which would be resolved by taking the contraceptive pill she's requesting. It. Again, that's very important. She's asking for something which will solve a problem which she doesn't have, possibly, to get the benefits of the pill for, like, you know, god deceptive reasons. Um, so, again, it's important. Dr. Martin has religious beliefs that disagree with the use of the contraceptive pill. That's not important at all. Again, religion um, should really not influence a doctor's decisions. A doctor's decisions should always act within the patient's best interest. Okay, so we've got one question wrong here. That Emma has said she can't his boyfriend. That's as a that's important. As Emma has told Martin, she only wishes, okay, she should have trust in her, okay, right. It's important the doctor trusts her, but then again, um, because she has a boyfriend, just because of that, and she's most likely sexually active, it doesn't mean the doctor could assume that it's, you know, for her, using it for that reason as opposed to the menstrual, menstrual cycle reason, so, um, yeah, fair enough, that's wrong. Right. That was nice. Let's do one more of these, and then we'll call it a day, shall we? So Mrs. Smith is a 78-year-old woman who sees Dr. Han for leg pain. It was her daughter for two weeks. Pain will get worse. Prescription for morphine. It's quite a strong painkiller. She's got another pain medication that is managing her pain well. Okay. As a token of appreciation herself, an iPad. Hmm? Okay. So... She's got leg pain, she's quite elderly, she's 80, nearly 80. She's got medication which currently relieves over the pain, but she's saying it could get worse over this holiday and she wants something even stronger just in case. Then she also offers him an iPad to show her token of appreciation. Of course, lots of patients are very grateful for, you know, the work that doctors do for them, but never should a doctor in a professional environment accept a gift. Um, they should always kindly decline because then it could sort of create a power imbalance which could lead to the patient expecting something which they shouldn't really get. Um, you know, the doctor kind of will feel uncomfortable because they've taken a gift from the patient and so they feel as if they might need to offer something they wouldn't otherwise offer. Okay, so this one agreed to prescribe the morphine. I'd say that's very inappropriate because she's, you know, managing a pain well right now. So if it does get worse, she could go and see a GP there and then and find, you know, strong medication. Accepting Mrs. Smith's gift on iPad, no. Give her your personal mobile number in case she experiences any pain. Nope, that's not good. You don't give out personal information. You give your office information or your GP's like practice information, and the GP can route the patient straight to you. Shout at Mrs. Smith and tell her she should not be demanding prescriptions. No, because you'd never shout at patients, and also she's old. Explain to Mrs. Smith what to do if she experiences pain during a trip. Very appropriate. So I think we've got about four out of five. Well, the earlier questions, I think question number two was quite interesting. So we'll see what we get. Oh, all five are correct. Right, that's really good. So with that, I think we'll call it a video. Do go and check out Medify, do use a platform, and begin practicing doing questions as we're doing today. Um, if you have any questions, please do ask me, and if not, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.